Welcome, welcome, welcome here to the Mad Roland Dolls Season 14 semifinals here at the Alliant Energy Center Coliseum. I am Rich Mahogany. And I'm Zinc Crosby. We are about to get into the second game of tonight's festivities. We're going to see the Quad Squad taking on the Reservoir Dolls. This is going to be for the championships, or to, for a chance at the championships. Uh, we just saw a game between the Vaudeville Vixens and the Unholy Rollers. Unholy Rollers coming out on top. So whoever wins this game will go to face the Unholy Rollers in the finals April 28th. But for now, we've got the Reservoir Dolls number one seed going up against the Quad Squad number four seed. So these teams did face off once before this season. That was uh, our first bout in January, January 13th. The uh, Reservoir Dolls came out with an 11 point win over the Quad Squad. Things coming down to the last uh, jam. Uh, although the, uh, the Reservoir Dolls took the lead in the half and held on to it since. Well, I, also, I also think that there's a kind of a large discrepancy in the number of penalties as well. Mm. Um, the Quad Squad suffered a number of more uh, penalty minutes uh, than the uh, Reservoir Dolls. Right. So I think that might have put them a little at a disadvantage. Most definitely, Quad Squad with 38 penalties total for uh, across their team. Reservoir Dolls with only 29. Well, uh, a bit of a difference, and that's you know 30 seconds of penalty. That's four and a half minutes. Math. Oh. Four and a half minutes. Definitely has an impact. But we are just about ready to get things underway here. I'd like to pass things off to our house announcers, Dolly, pardon me, and the Goram Reaver to introduce our teams. Fitchburg Muya location, 6309 McKee Road, from 5 to 10 p.m., eating all the burgers, fries, and shakes that you love. That sounds fantastic. It does. And I think we hear the teams getting warmed up. We're going to see the Reservoir Dolls take on the Quad Squad tonight. I'm just getting the okay from the head ref. Making sure we're good to start with our announcements. Okay, and that looks like so we're going to get down to this action and introduce our teams. First up, coming into this game, zero and three, looking for the W. It is the Bad Squad. Starting off with number zero four eight, Sharknado Alley. Number zero I, Murder Face. One zero one, Quilla DeVille. One 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 is Electrical Disturbance. One two zero, Poison Dart. One four one, Spam. Number one eight is Crocodopolis. 215 is Professor Booty. 25 is Jaws. 273 is Ice Pick. 52 is the Big Dazzler. 5388 is Upset. Number seven is Kill Switch. 796 is Conan the Mean Librarian. Shh. Number eight is Chick Chick Boom. Number nine is the Trickster. 906, Anita Donut. 918 is the Seraphire. And number nine, seven is the Smiler. Bad Squad is joined on the bench by Knuckle Sandwich, Black Metal, Stevie Kicks, Hazer, and Lil Miss Behavin. Let's hear it, Bad Squad fans. And looking to carry their wins all the way to champs is the 2018 Reservoir Dolls. At 106, we have the Mad Gabber. Number 13 is Call of the Wild. 155 is Lip Smacker. 
Number 18, Full Frontal Judity. Number 185, Supernova. Number two, Critical Tits. Number 262, Nat Splat. Number 270, Slyonide. Number 31, Lady Hoo-Ha. Number four is Mouse. Number five, Miss Mechanics. Number 565, The Block Nest Monster. Number eight is Sassbot. Number 815, Auntie Matter. And number 8990, Frankie Fatal. Your Reservoir Dolls are supported on the bench by Scout, Caligori, Bombchu, Mass Myrtle, Tenacious D, and Blitz Siren. Give it up for the Reservoir Dolls. So those are going to be our teams for today. We are just about ready to get into this contest. As we were saying before, uh, Reservoir Dolls 3-0 this season. Quad Squad 0-3. So quad, like, and it's, that's not to say that, that victory and access to the championships is not outside of the Quad Squad's reach at this point. All it, requ it requires is if they win, they go on to the finals to take on the Unholy Rollers. And I had actually received a direct quote from, uh, I believe, skating under Crocodopolis uh, this season, uh, saying that uh, this was kind of a test run, uh, the, and uh, having better seating would have been nice. But at the same time, let's uh, sandbag a little bit and make the finals and the semifinals count. Well, I'm certain that they will because the games that the Quad Squad lost were all very, very close games. As we said, they only lost by 11 points to the Reservoir Dolls when they played last, and we are ready to get into the action here, Zing. We've got Lady Hoo-Ha jamming for the Reservoir Dolls, wearing the star in black, up against the Trickster for the Bad Squad in green. It looks like Lady Hoo-Ha's out first. She's got lead jammer. Um, she's been having a pretty banner season. Um, again, I believe she skates for uh, Dairyland A. That she does. She was a, a very effective jammer for them when they were uh, out competing at the Clover Cup Invitational uh, Invitational Tournament in uh, in Dallas, Texas. Uh, they came second in that tournament. They, that they did. It came down to the last jam going up against Sacramento. It was a, an action-packed tournament. Into this jam, Lady Hoo-Ha calling off the jam after picking up five points. Uh, that's nine points total. So they will have a 9-0 lead over the Quad Squad. Got a replay in happening here. You can see Lady Hua coming around the outside, dodging by Quilla DeVille. And uh, just making a pass, Sequin Destroyer, AKA um, the Bedazzler, I believe, this season. So for, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with the way roller derby is played, we'd like to break it down for you here. So we see our skaters here. Everybody uh, has, you know, has helmets on their head. Safety is important. But each team has a single skater that has a star on their helmet. So we have Mouse here with the star on her helmet in black for the Reservoir Dolls, up against Upset for the Quad Squad. These two skaters are the ones that are eligible to score points. What happens is as soon as you clear all of the opposing blockers, you get lead jammer designation. What this does, it gives you one very special power, the power to end the jam, to end the play. Once either skater has gotten through that initial pass, initially passed all of the opposing blockers, they are then eligible to score points. They do so by passing the hips of opposing skaters after having gone through that initial pass. Including the other jammer, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. So it is a total of five points possible per pass. How's that for a little bit of pop and alliteration for you, Zing? Indeed. Uh, quite enjoyable. Refreshing, even. Um, and if you're in the penalty box and... Uh, Members of your team starting get, start getting passed. Are you a point as well then? You are. As soon as one member of your team is passed, you become a point as well. We are now into this next jam. The Bedazzler jamming for the Quad Squad in green, going up against Nat Splat for the Reservoir Dolls in black. We see Nat Splat pushing through 
The Bedazzler will get through first, however, due to a no pass, no penalty situation, basically meaning she passed somebody out of bounds. She will not get lead jam. Lead jam goes over to Nat Splat, and we see here Nat will call off the jam before any points can be put up by the bad squad. Wise decision there. Indeed, is that uh, any time that you can grab that lead jammer status, that gives your a team a decided tactical advantage against it, your opponents. Get a little bit of score breakdown here. Currently the only scoring jammer is Lady Hoo-Ha for the Reservoir Dolls with nine. And we will have a momentary, uh, an official timeout called for. Our officials going to make sure that everything is sorted out here. We've got our non-skating officials trying to figure things out there. And, uh, Zing, why don't we take a moment here to thank one of our sponsors. Absolutely. Well, first and uh, foremost, I'd like to thank Hinkley Productions. Game coverage brought to you by Hinkley tonight, brought to you by Hinkley Productions. Leading the way in live HD video streaming and professional commercial video production. Supporting the Dolls and Derby since 2009, or 2008, excuse me. Not only making the feed look handsome, but being handsome ourselves. It's key to the job. It, it, it really is. You can't do this job of video production without being devilishly handsome, and the members of Hinkley Design and Productions fill the role to a T. I look like a garbage bag next to them. It's I'm going to be honest. <laughs> So we are ready to get into this next jam. Uh, officials have figured out whatever they need to figure out. Looks like we've got a single bad squad blocker in the box. We will have Spam jamming for the bad squad in green, going up against Lady Hoo-Ha for the Reservoir Dolls in black. Lady Hoo-Ha out to take lead jam. The pack did break right there. The two uh, sections of the pack uh, separated enough for the uh, referee to call no pack forcing them to uh, give up their blocking and uh, focus more on reforming the pack. And there, Lady Hoo-Ha will call off the jam. Looks like four points picked up that will increase the Reservoir Dolls score to 13. Quad squad remaining at zero. Quad squad, uh, you, you may notice we're, we're kind of bouncing between calling them the quad squad and the bad squad. The quad squad, has there's a bit of a story here. So the quad squad is a team of roller derby superheroes until this past season. This past season, while roaming through the woods around Madison, Wisconsin, they came across an evil fortune-telling machine that struck them with lightning, imbuing them with evil powers, turning them into the bad squad. Indeed, but it's been a rocky start for the bad squad, is that, um, while do-gooders by day, they had a hard time adopting the evil deeds by night uh, aspect of this. And so uh, their tenure as uh, evildoers is unknown at this point. Um, this jam um, ending, giving three points to the Reservoir Dolls. Fair. Thank you to uh, Mouse. Um, and then zero for the Bad Squad. And uh, a lot of their, the folks on their team feel uncomfortable being this evil. Well, we'll see if they can be brought back to the side of justice by the end of this season. Perhaps they will be, you know, they have the light of Leggy shed upon them to shed off this evil, or perhaps the the lack of access to Leggy will will make them realize the error of their ways. We will find out as we go into this next jam. We got the Bedazzler number 52 going up to skate for the Bad Squad in green, going up against Nat Splat number 262 for the Reservoir Dolls in black. And it looks like, um, as is traditional here, the floor is very rough. Uh, it's unpolished concrete, and so people get a lot of grip. And it ends up uh, not only slowing people down, but people really focus in on making those walls, those lines, and reinforcing them, uh, as the quad squad is doing up here right now. Um, it can really slow down uh, and really make you work for each single um, person you're trying to pass. The, the Dazzler, however, is sent to the penalty box on a back blocking call. Uh, making this a power jam for Nat Splat. The Dazzler had picked up lead jammer designation prior to this. Going to the penalty box will lose her that power. So with that, we have no lead jammer. The jam cannot be called. It will go for the full two minutes. Whistles abound. The uh, bad squad, again, losing blockers. Looks like three blockers out there for the Reservoir Dolls as well. Allie Gator, also known as Crocodopolis at the back of the pack, doing the work to keep Nat Splat back. Crocod oh, Crocodopolis is a uh, veteran of the Dearland Dolls A, uh, a squad. Not happy with the uh, lack of a penalty call there, as you can see. Um, but her jammer's back on the track. More penalty whistles abound, and the Reservoir Dolls lose uh, Lip Smacker, K155. 
Ice pick now back on the track for the bad squad as Bedazzler comes around the track looking to score some points. She will weave all around the, the Reservoir Dolls defense. Great job there by the bad squad defense, keeping the Reservoir Dolls walls from being able to form. Really making it look easy too, Rich. So we will note that we do have a star pass on the track. So we mentioned that the skaters have, that have the stars on their helmets are the jammers. They are able to score the points. However, they can also pass off their star to the pivot, who is the skater on her team with the stripe on her helmet. And we'd like to thank you all for joining the Mad Rolling Dolls. We will be back in just a moment. You are watching the Mad Rolling Dolls semifinals. Happy bout season. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us here. We are, have the Bad Squad taking on the Reservoir Dolls. 14 points for the Bad Squad. Reservoir Dolls in the lead with 21. We are back into the action as Lady Hoo-Ha jams for the Reservoir Dolls in black, going up against the Bad Squad's upset in green. 22 minutes left in this uh, half, Rich. Uh, seven point game, really anybody's game here at this point. It's a very close, in fact we have a very close jammer race here. Both jammers out, Lady Hoo-Ha out first. Taunting upset, upset a bit. Uh, and this is the kind of roller derby you really like to see, Rich, is that everybody's having some fun, smiles are being thrown around there a lot more than elbows. That's kind of my gig. Very fast jam there as the pack raced around the track, waiting for confirmation on the score. I believe no points were even scored. I think it might have just been a uh, horse race, pardon the pun, uh, to the end right there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no points. But, well, we missed the... Uh, did we miss the info? So we'll just talk about this next game. Oh, let's do. We've got Mouse, number four for the Reservoir Dolls, jamming in black. Going up against Spam, number 141 for the Bad Squad in green. Spam, also known as Hammer Abbey, has uh, a bit more of a newcomer to uh, the uh, the interleague, but uh, has made a name for herself both on and off the track uh, as a skater and as an announcer. That she has. She was off at the Roller Derby World Cup, uh, the Women's World Cup, several uh, for several weeks ago, representing team announcer out there. And uh, she is through. She is, in fact, your lead jammer for the bad squad. That's right. Mouse headed off to the penalty box. She is. So this is now a power jam for the bad squad. Fantastic opportunity to start taking back the lead here. As Spam comes around with two blockers to beat, slides in between. Call it to Wild. And I believe that was the Mad Gabber. I believe so as well. Mad Gabber making her presence known on the track, knocking down number seven, kill switch engage. Very nice move there. Mouse back on the track, leaps over the apex, narrowly dodging Quilla DeVille. So she will now threaten to score the points, causing Spam to call off the jam. Total of five points gained for the quad squad, holding the Res Dolls scoreless. And there we see Mouse dodging that hit. Very nicely done. And that's really the uh, path of least resistance here, Rich. Like, hey, it seems like uh, either fighting through uh, person after person after person or just jumping past them. Yeah. Sometimes that's the shortest and easiest path. Sometimes that leap is a little large to take. Certainly wasn't for Mouse that time. Mm -hmm. Getting back into the action on the track, we see number nine, the Trickster, jamming for the Bad Squad in green, going up against number 262, Nat Splat, for the Reservoir Dolls in black. Quick shout out to WORT. Tune in to WORT 89.9 FM Community Radio for great underground music and talk. Go to WORT.FM.org uh, uh, or listen uh, to listen live or on demand. The Trickster threw to take lead jam, threw for a quick scoring pass, five point grand slam up on the board. With that, we have a lead change. Everybody at home, take a drink. Nat Splat still trying to work her way through the pack. She will remove the star. Will she pass it on to the pivot? Likely not, as her pivot, the Matt Gabber, is deep inside the pack. So Splat will get around, gonna put that star back on her head. Trickster having a bit of a problem at the back of the pack, decides discretion is the better part of Valor. Calls it off, one point. Uh, tacked on to the Bad Squad slash Quad Squad score. Big jam for the Bad Squad, 11 points total, bringing them to not have a nine point lead over the Reservoir Dolls, 30 to 21. So we're going to get a quick lineup here for the next jam. We are going to see Lady Hoo-Ha wearing the star for the Reservoir Dolls in black, going up against the Seraphire for the Bat Squad in green. 
Lady Hoo-Ha trying to work her way up the outside line. She is now finding herself in the middle of the bad squad wall, who's having a hard time reforming. She keeps on her skates on the outside, gets lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. And uh, meanwhile, the Seraphire out as well. Hungry for points as, uh, as she is. However, Murderface getting caught by surprise at the back of the pack quickly becomes a point for Lady Hoo-Ha on one leg. Second straightaway. All, all the points are right there, Rich. Yeah, big jam there. That was a, a very close jam. Only one point separating those teams. See Lady Hoo-Ha taking off on the outside. Mohawking through, staying on on the one skate mid call off on one leg. What an incredible move. So we do have a timeout on the track. Another shout out to Lauer Realty Group. Amazing. Dolls, kick ass. Off the track, Lauer Realty Group is ready to jam for you and all your real estate needs. Lauer Realty Group located at 229 or 2229 Atwood Avenue or online at lauerrealtygroup.com. Thank you to all of our sponsors keeping us rolling here, Mad Rolling Dolls. As we continue to have a little bit of time as this team timeout continues. I'll throw another one in there, Rich. Oh, Why please not? do. Uh, this one for Paps Blue Ribbon, something a little bit closer to my heart or perhaps in my veins. Paps Blue Ribbon proudly sponsors the Mad Rollin' Dolls. So PBR yourself, ASAP. What do you have? A Paps Blue Ribbon. I will indeed. You just did, didn't you? You sly dog. So we are ready to get back into the action. We'll have Mouse taking the line for the Reservoir Dolls, number four, going up against Upset for the Bad Squad, number 5388. Upset around the outside, takes a lead jam for the Bad Squad. Mouse takes the outside and then shifts violently to the inside, sneaks past Koala DeVille, but Upset already coming back to the back of the pack, runs through, tries to call it off, but is called off herself for a penalty which will leave Mouse as the only jammer on the track for a full two minutes. For, 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 for 30 seconds, however, this jam will go for the full two oh, minutes. Yes, of course. So the, the penalties that each of these skaters serve, regardless of what they have done, will only earn them 30 seconds in the box. That is per penalty. So if you rack up numerous penalties on your way to the box, then you have to serve the time for each one that you acquire. But in this case, upset will only be in the box for 30 seconds, but 30 seconds is a lot of time when you have to stop a jammer like Mouse. She is through again for another five points. And with that zing, we've got another lead change. Indeed, everybody knows what to do at home. Derby drinking game. Um, number 13 out there, um, Call of the Wild, really did, her, um, really did an amazing block, allowing Mouse to get past on that one. Um, quad Squad again, hemorrhaging blockers. We've got three on the track. But it really helps to have that fourth one. Both teams will lose their pivot to the box. Upset through the pack for four points. Mouse right behind her, picking up a grand slam on that last pass. As we said, this jam will go the full two minutes, so there are 30 seconds left to skate. Mouse jukes left, jukes right, gets around Quilla Deville and number 273 for the bad squad, Ice Pick. That'll be another four point pass for the Reservoir Dolls. And Call of the Wild recycling upset to the back of the pack again. Very e eco-friendly, eco-conscious skaters here, always trying to recycle. It's Reservoir Dolls blockers doing such a great job at controlling upset, controlling all of the bad squad jammers. She they played a very clean season, and it's very apparent here. They are, uh, they seem to be very disciplined. A most definitely a 24-point jam for the Reservoir Dolls, taking the lead back from the Bad Squad. Lead change. You know what to do, folks. So there we have our jammer stats here. So you can see Mouse, the high-scoring jammer with 27 for the Res Dolls. Over on the Quad Squad side, the Bedazzler with 14. You can also see here the number of jams that they've uh, played in, the number of times they got lead, and their lead percentage. Getting into this next jam, Spam leaps the apex for a quick lead jam for the Bad Squad. She's going up against Supernova for the Reservoir Dolls. Supernova trapped between the Dazzler and Chick Chick Boom. Trying to get through to complete that initial pass. She will get through, staying on those toe stops 
not falling to the inside. But in the meantime, Spam round and round the track she goes. That's going to be another four-point pass. Calling off the jam, nine points total for the bad squad. And again, we have a lead change. One point separating these teams, 50 to 49 in favor of the bad squad. We see here Ham, or Spam rather, in her apex leap to get that quick lead at the beginning of the jam. And I got another shout out. Uh, another sponsor here is the UW School of Workers. School of Workers' mission is to empower working people and labor organizations at the job site in a national economy and in a global economic system through a comprehensive program of lifelong adult learning opportunities. Sign up for an upcoming class on important topics like labor and employment law, internal organization, or bargaining benefits by visiting schoolforworkers.uwex.edu. What's going on on the track, Rich? We've got Lady Hoo-Ha taking lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. She is jamming against the Trickster for the Bad Squad. Trickster right on the heels of Lady Hoo-Ha. Hoo-Ha signaling to her pack, go, go, skate as fast as you can. She will call off the jam, no points scored by either team. We are going to take a commercial break. Thank you for joining us here at the Mad Rollin' Dolls. We will be back in yes, just a moment. Welcome back here at the contest between the Bad Squad and the Reservoir Dolls. Things are neck and neck here. We've got Bad Squad at 50 points. One point trailing behind is the Reser are the Reservoir Dolls. Zing, what do you think? Um, it's really anybody's game right now, Rich. And especially, this is like kind of a puzzler because the Quad Squad came into this with 0-3, not, uh, not a win in their, uh, in their record. Uh, into this game, and meanwhile, the Reservoir Dolls came in without a loss. So you'd expect this to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a, uh, a gap. Well, it's certainly not having any gaps here. We've got Mouse jamming up against the Bedazzler. We'll have a penalty call against Mouse, so this will be a power jam for the Bedazzler. So Bedazzler now through to take lead jam. As you were saying, the like. The Bad Squad did come in with this 0-3 record to the Res Dolls 3-0, but again, the games that the Quad Squad has lost have been very, very close games. They have indeed, Rich. And uh, each one has been less by, and than 25 points, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct. In fact, the, the highest score differential that we've seen all season long has been 47 points between the game uh, between the Reservoir Dolls and the, and the Unholy Rollers back on March 3rd. It's, uh, the teams have really balanced themselves out this year. Uh, and I understand that the uh, Dairyland Dolls have capitalized on that uh, again in their recent trip to Clover Cup. A very strong showing at Clover Cups for the Dairyland Dolls. We'll have the jam called off by the Bedazzler here after 10 point jam. Well, eking out their lead a little bit more. 11 points now separating these two teams with 12 minutes remaining to play in the first half. Yeah, I think the quad squad have really come in and uh, really looking for something to prove this game. Um, again, they're, uh, they're usually late bloomers. Um, historically, they've uh, focused less on the main season and more on semifinals and finals. Um, again, from one of their own skaters, Crocodopolis or Alligator as she is more, more often known. So we see the Seraphire jamming for the Bad Squad, number nine, uh, 918, going up against Nat Splat for the Reservoir Dolls, number 262. Up at the front, Seraphire is out to take lead jam for the Quad Squad. Nat Splat right on her heels. Seraphire will call off that jam. Another shout out for the Chocolate Shop Ice Cream. This is the best ice cream made in Wisconsin. And it tastes so good because it has gobs of rich Wisconsin cream, tons of real ingredients, and boatloads of luscious flavors. That means it's not low fat, not low calorie, or low anything. That's why everyone loves it. You want nutrition? I'm afraid you're going to have to eat a carrot. So we'll see getting Lady Hoo-Ha on the line for the Reservoir Dolls in black up against the Trickster for the Bad Squad in green. As you, as you were saying, these teams are like late bloomers for the Bad Squad because while they have not won a game yet this home season, all they need to do is win this game and they will have a ticket to the finals against the Unholy Rollers. Indeed. And uh, it's ideal to have good placement for this game, but it's not necessary. And the Quad Squad seem to be demonstrating that pretty well. Trickster out lead jammer for the Quad Squad. Um, Lady Hua having been sucked back into the pack and recycled out now, but 
Trickster came in, uh, got a couple of points, or one point, uh, for the quad squad on that one, and decided rather than trying to uh, get up and scramble for more, call it and take another two minutes. Oh, wise choice. You don't want to gas yourself out at this phase. Now, granted, we are getting closer to the halftime, so it'll be a 10-minute break for all of our skaters. However, nine and a half minutes remaining to play. As the quad squad, you don't want to give up this lead. As the Reservoir Dolls, you can't stop putting on the pressure. And nobody really wants to interrupt the flow of this game with any timeouts yet either. Rich. And a lot of that is, you know, people are starting to go into a groove. People are starting to kind of find their feet. Um, pump their getaway sticks a little bit more. And so, uh, again, you don't want to uh, get in the way of somebody per pitching a perfect game. You just leave them alone. Let them do their thing. Upset through to take lead jam for the bad squad. Going up against Mouse for the Reservoir Dolls. Pack picking up speed. Uh, of course, as I say that, bad squad puts on the brakes to try to hold Mouse back. But Mouse will dance up that inside line. Is through. Going to start threatening to score points. Meanwhile, upset at the back of the pack, pushing through. Uh, a large hole opened up by Ice Pick uh, allows her to pick up four more points for the quad squad. That brings us to about We've got another shout out for Ian's Pizza. Ian's Pizza is a proud sponsor of the Mad Rollin' Dolls. Ian's Pizza has two downtown locations, 100 State Street next to the Capitol and 319 North Francis near the Cole Center. Both locations are open late. Order online at www.ianspizza.com. Downtown delivery is available. So those of you watching at home cannot be too picky about your pizza, just eat your pizza. Getting back down to the action on the track. Spam, where's the star for the bad squad in green? That's number 141. Going up against Nat Splat for the Reservoir Dolls in black. That is number 262. The formations of four blockers at the front always seems to be pretty devastating, both in terms of blocking, but also in penalties. Seems to be a fairly risky maneuver with both teams losing a, oh, excuse me, just one team losing a blocker this time around. But it is a power jam right now. Well, it, we actually have a star pass yep. here. So Spam is taking lead jam for the bad squad. She is now skating against Supernova. Pivot turn jammer for the Reservoir Dolls. That will get the star out of the pack, forcing the call off. Four points up for the quad squad, holding the Reservoir Dolls scoreless. Quad squad starting to pull away with this one, Zing. 20 points now separated. But we are going to take a moment for a commercial break. Thank you for joining us here at the Mad Rollin' Dolls. You are watching the Mad Rollin' Dolls Season 14 Semifinals. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. I am Rich Mahogany, joined alongside Zing Crosby. We are at 69 to 49 as the Quad Squad takes on the Reservoir Dolls in favor of the Quad Squad. Seven minutes remain to play. We've got Lady Hoo-Ha jamming up against the Bedazzler, but the Bedazzler threw to take lead jam for the Quad Squad. However, it looks like there is a penalty of attempting to be communicated in. Looks like the Bedazzler is being sent to the penalty box with a forearm penalty. Lead jammer is available. Hoo-Ha will take that. And think that the other jammer was still in there and call it off anyway. But the rest well, of our dolls will be starting in a power jam situation. That's right, and they get that full 30 seconds of penalty on the bad squad to see what they can do here. Seems like the Reservoir Dolls are going to put Mouse up to skate. And an unopposed Mouse is a dangerous opponent here on the track. Most definitely, fortunately for the quad squad, they have all four of their blockers on the track. You can see Ice Pick here anticipating some offense from the Reservoir Dolls. Mouse works her way up to the front of the pack, weaving through. Quad Squad keeping with a bit of a loose wall here as number five, Miss Mechanics, is up there getting in the business of their blockers. Sometimes all you need to be is a disruptor, Rich. Um, anything that you can do to like disrupt uh, the walls, especially like the three and two walls that keep on forming. Um, or sometimes you just slam into somebody straight on and uh, knock them the, right the hell over. <laughs> sometimes you do, and sometimes you get lead jammer if you're mouse. The Dazzler is back on the track. Both teams at full strength, five on five on the flat track. That jam will be called, waiting for score confirmation for the Reservoir Dolls. Looks like no points picked up by the bad squad. I've got another shout out here. Uh, this one's for Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Cash in the day, coins, jewelry, and more. Jim's Coins in Hilldale, Jim's Coins in Hilldale, Jim's Coins in Hilldale. You guessed it, folks. About to get started up here. It looks like we've got the Sarah Fire uh, is the jamming for the Quad Squad and Matt Splat for the Reservoir Dolls. 
So the Reservoir Dolls have been scoreless for the past 10 jams. Quad Squad really seeming to find their rhythm here, find what they need to do to keep the Reservoir Dolls in check. And one thing that'll help that is Nat Splat, jammer for the Reservoir Dolls, going off to the penalty box. Sarah Fire takes lead jam and a power jam. And if uh, the Quad Squad blockers can keep on providing a fair amount of blocking or capture somebody at the back to make the pack, um, they can really help the Sarah Fire capitalize on the lead that they have there and keep that momentum going into the second half. We'll see that they can do that. We've got a pack getting together up around turn three. Sarah Fire working her way through now with only one to beat. Supernova pushing her to the inside will not recycle her. Will instead get a penalty and be sent to the box. Matt Splat making it through right at the last second. No points. Ten points in total for the quad squad. Only four minutes left in the half, Rich. Quad Squad slowly but surely widening their lead over the Reservoir Dolls. And that's all it takes is uh, nickel and diming, as it turns out, still works here. Yeah, things are looking really good here. You can see the Bedazzler over at the Quad Squad with 24 points, but there's a very clean distribution of points over there for the Quad Squad, whereas over on the Reservoir Dolls side, most of the points have been picked up by Mouse, 31 points. The next highest scoring jammer for them has been Lady Hoo-Ha with 17. Lady Hoo-Ha now wearing the star for the Reservoir Dolls in black, going up against the Trickster for the Quad Squad in green. Watch out for those uh, trap doors there on uh, the first apex. Trickster makes it past them and their opponents to uh, get lead jammer. Hoo-Ha is out as well. But definitely a little bit of a uh, pile up on the belt line out there. And we've got the trickster she called, uh, Kenna, excuse me, the trickster calls it off one point for the reservoir, or excuse me, for the quad squad, zero points for the reservoir dolls. But hey, when you're in the lead, and he's scoring while your opponent doesn't score any, Most that's a win. Definitely, that, even just that one to zero uh, jam is going to be great for the quad squad, going to be very happy to get that. As long as they are getting more points than the reservoir dolls per jam, that is going to be a win. You know, when you boil it down like that, Rich, sports don't seem so complicated. Nope, it's really just a matter of math. Fortunately for me, I'm bad at math, so this entertains me. Numbers don't lie right up until they do. Honestly, this entertains me even if I'd be good at math. We've got Mouse out there taking lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls, going up against Spam for the Bad Squad. Spam pushing her way through the last vestige of Reservoir Dolls defense, just two to beat. She will get through. Looks like a little bit of penalty confusion here. Looked like Spam had scored a penalty of her own, but that was a because the blocker had first scored a penalty, therefore did not exist on the track to have cut her. Oh, geez. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Here's another one. Just Coffee has roasted 100% organic fair trade coffee here in Madison for 15 years. They are proud to continue their lifelong partnership with the Mad Roland Dolls. So we see here the score again, like really the big, the only point scorers for the Reservoir Dolls being Mouse and Lady Hoo-Ha. A few points picked up by Miss Mechanics. But other than that, just Mouse has really been carrying their score, whereas, uh, as we said before, the Quad Squad having their score spread out far more evenly amongst their jammers. Upset now taking lead jam for the Quad Squad. Jamming up against Nat Splat for the Reservoir Dolls. Nat Splat has taken off of her helmet cover, hoping to confuse their opponents just a little bit. Any little bit of advantage you can grab. Uh, still not having put the helmet cover on. Uh, in fact, perhaps just a just a hair of taunting uh, out there by upset. Um, all in good fun. God willing, the creek don't rise. Oh, and Nat Splat definitely seems to be enjoying that. A big grin on her face as she came around that corner and completed that jam. One point each on that pass. Quad Squad will come out in the lead with six to one over the Reservoir Dolls. Score now Reservoir Dolls 58, Quad Squad 86. With 30 seconds remaining on the clock, this will likely be the last jam of the half. Oop, and in, you bet it is, uh, with an official timeout. Terciops Truncatus, Truncatus Studios. Terciops Truncatus Studios is a local independent game design studio offering great games and fun gifts for your game for the gamers in your life. Watch for our flagship title, The Day That We Fought Space, coming soon 
to a tablet near you. they have some photographers over there. They might. So again, we've got our, our scores here. So we can see, again, Bedazzler high score for the Quad Squad with 24. Mouse high score for the Reservoir Dolls with 35. We can see that for the for large part, Quad Squad is getting the majority of the lead jams. Got uh, the Bedazzler, having picked up all those points, only getting lead jam once of the five times she was out there. But Spam and Upset both out to jam five times, getting lead jam three of those times. The Trickster out to jam six times, getting lead jam three of those times. Just fewer lead jams seem to be happening for the Reservoir Dolls. And while, while the status, shall we say, of lead jammer is helpful, it is by no means the ultimate determinant of who scores the points. And especially if that uh, status can be revoked by getting a penalty, and then you're then you're up a creek, my friend. That's right. It can it you can definitely get a good deal of control from that designation, but it will not make uh, it's not everything. It's not a bulletproof shield. Not at um, all. And especially when uh, skaters are again starting to learn to utilize penalties rather than avoid them. And so yeah, maybe I have seven trips to the box. Maybe this penalty might be worth it. Who knows? But back out here on the track, we've got Lady Hoo-Ha, now lead jammer for the Reservoir Dolls, followed up closely by the trickster herself, uh, hot on her heels. Both of these jammers flying around the track. Hoo-Ha going to thrust her way into the pack, calling off the jam as quickly as she can. No points scored by the bad squad, waiting for confirmation on score for the Reservoir Dolls. Looks like a penalty may have been assessed right at the end there. Mm -hmm. Have our officials calling out one point up there for the Reservoir Dolls. So that will bring us into the half. Reservoir Dolls trailing 59 to the Bad Squad's 86. A very action-packed game here, Zing. Indeed, and it's a very close one as well. And you see both teams really kind of testing the waters. The Quad Squad has kind of um, shared the load between a number of their jammers, making sure that... Um, None of no jam is too taxed in the same position. However, the reservoir dolls I know practice in a fashion that really encourages that kind of uh, endurance out of their jammers, and so it's a couple of interesting strategies we're seeing here, Rich. Well, we're going to see how things turn out after both of these teams take to the locker rooms and confer over our 10-minute halftime. Uh, we will be back with the rest of the action shortly. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rich Mahogany, and I'm Zen Crosby. We'll be back shortly. Okay, oh boy. welcome back. We are here at the half, second half of the Mad Roland Dolls Season 14 semifinal bout between the Bad Squad and the Reservoir Dolls. I'm Rich Mahogany. And I'm Zing Crosby. It's been, a, it's been a close game here, Rich. That it has been. We've got the Quad Squad currently leading 86 to 59, but not a huge score gap. They have been controlling the game pretty much for this, like since the second half of the first half. And it really in fits and spurts, and so they've been flying four points here, five points here, nine points here. Uh, they've managed to amass uh, a fairly decent lead. Yep. And as you can see here from the score totals, the quad squad high score is the Bedazzler with 24 points, high score for the Reservoir Dolls Mouse with 35. On the side of the quad squad, they have a much more even jammer scoring spread, whereas the Reservoir Dolls, basically you've got Mouse and Lady Hoo-Ha, uh, and then after that, Miss Mechanics and Nat Splat having picked up points themselves. So taking a look at penalties for these teams, no real penalty trouble happening. We've got three penalties for, uh, max for either side of the team, uh, either side of things. Nobody in trouble of fouling out so far, Z. True. And um, again, the quad squad are having a little bit of a hard time reining them in. Um, by my count, they are still out penaltying uh, the Red Dolls, uh, but not by quite as wide a margin as we've seen in previous games this season. Well, we are ready to get back into the action here. Reservoir Dolls will start a blocker down with Supernova, their pivot, sitting in the box. Otherwise, we will see Lady Hoo-Ha jamming for the Reservoir Dolls in black. That is number 31. Over for the Bad Squad in green, we've got number 141, Spam. Lady Hoo-Ha making her way to the front of the pack, now with only three blockers to beat. Spam being held back for a while, but now rocketing forward. She will get through right behind Lady Hoo-Ha. We've got a jammer race on Zing. And uh, this, is, uh, this is not uncommon in this particular game. Um, uh, numerous times switching back and forth, both, uh, both teams have had this kind of jammer race before, both getting out at almost the exact same time. 
That's right, both very talented jammers here, so not surprising to see that outcome. Looks like the jam was called before any points could be scored by either team. So we're going, that uh, did allow enough time for Supernova to get out of the box, so we now have five on five on the flat track. You have, you have unfortunately issued, you have from your mouth said a curse, and so. That is true. It, the, as an announcer, when you say one thing, the opposite will immediately become true, so I'm anticipating that penalty now. Uh, I apologize in advance to the skater for whom it falls upon. We've got Mouse jamming for the Reservoir Dolls, but getting lead jam is gonna be upset for the Bad Squad. Mouse out as well now. Uh, again, not, uh, not lead, but still eligible for points. Upset making her way through the pack, trying to pass that last blocker. She Mouse does race off and score a single point for the Reservoir Dolls, but three points for the quad squad. And when you're ahead, any score differential in your favor that burns the clock down, that's a win. Oh, definitely a good jam there for the Reservoir Dolls, picking up that one point, only two point difference between those teams for that jam. Quad squad will maintain the lead with 89 points up against the Reservoir Dolls, 60. Getting down to the action on the track for this next jam, we see number 262 in black, Nat Splat, jamming for the Reservoir Dolls. Over on the side of the bad squad, we have number nine, the Trickster. Who makes it look easy on the outside, sneaking past the last blocker, Miss Mechanics. Nat Splat almost immediately taking off that helmet cover, making sure that she's as camouflaged as she can be coming through the pack. Matt Splat works her way up to the front of the pack. Now only two blockers to beat, one blocker to beat. She is through. Now eligible to begin scoring points. The Trickster will get through the pack, picking up her five points. Will then call off the jam, 5-0 jam in favor of the Bat Squad. Got a uh, quick shout out to uh, Super Duper. We offer digital, offset, letterpress, and hand silkscreen printing. And we specialize in CD and DVD packaging and manufacturing. That's Super Duper. Super Duper. And uh, again, the quad squad seems to be, again, accruing points where they can. They're not having a necessarily points buffet, but really snacking on points throughout the day. Indeed. Just make sure they're, they're not quite getting their fill. They have certainly not gotten their fill. We're going to see what the Seraphire can do jamming for the quad squad here, going up against Lady Hoo-Ha for the Reservoir Dolls. No Lady pack is called. The pack has to try to reform, and that releases Hoo-Ha from the front. That will get... Lead jammer status going over to Lady Hoo-Ha and the Reservoir Dolls. Seraphire now at the front of the pack, just one to beat. Supernova will knock her to the inside, forces her to recycle all the way back to the back of the pack. She will have to make her way through that pack again. Lady Hoo-Ha just barely gets recycled by the Bedazzler here on the first straightaway. Seraphire is still struggling to get through. Tries to call it off, realizes she is the lead, and goes back into the fray. Lady Hoo-Ha up at the front. Well, now recycled to the back. Meantime, Seraphire will get through comp completing her initial pass. She is now eligible to score points. With the threat of that on the horizon, Lady Hoo-Ha will call off the jam after picking up a grand slam. So that will be a 29 point differential here. Let's see. Not insurmountable. Definitely uh, something that the Reservoir Dolls are going to need to get into check in the not too distant future here. And again, we've here with ha we have Mouse and Lady Hoo-Ha re leading the Reservoir Dolls for points, and the Bedazzler and Upset uh, both leading for the Quad Squad slash Bad Squad. Uh, out there on the track, looks like we've got Spam, the mystery meet herself, up against Mouse, uh, having a bit of trouble up at the front. Mouse juking around, Ice Pick will get through to take lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Spam still stuck, however, she will get a good bit of help from her friends there, taking up the Reservoir Dolls blockers. Wide open on the outside, Spam is through to complete her initial pass. Mouse will call the jam after getting through and picking up four points. Got a quick shout out for the Cooper's Tavern. Those of you uh, listening and watching along at home, uh, head to the Cooper's Tavern for craft beer, rustic music, and that's on the square here in Madison. We see this instant replay of Mouse coming up behind number 270, Slyonide. She will just barely get by, calls off that jam. And just before 120, uh, barreled down and uh, perhaps made a smear out of her right in front of the uh, scoreboard. But on the 
on the track right now. We have Upset jamming for the quad squad up against, looks like Matt Splat. Upset gets through on the outside, takes lead jam for the bad squad. Nat Splat works her way free of the pack, jukes out to the outside, faking out those bad squad blockers. You will get through completing that initial pass. And the quad squad sitting up at the back of the pack looking to draw it out as long as they can. They keep Lip Smacker at the back so that uh, their jammer can pass, score her point, and score one for, I believe, a point in the box. Two for the quad squad. So we will want to be taking a quick commercial break here. We'll be right back into the action here as the Reservoir Dolls take on the Quad Squad. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching the Mad Rollin' Dolls semifinals bout of season 14. Thank you for watching. Welcome back here. I am Rich Mahogany. And I'm Zig Crosby. What do we got going on the track, Rich? Oh, we have some sweet action happening here. Lady Hoo-Ha jamming for the Reservoir Dolls. She will get out first. However, picks up a track cut penalty on the way. That'll give her 30 seconds to sit in the box and think about what she's done. This will also give the jammer for the bad squad, the trickster number nine in green, a power jam. And she had a little bit of trouble here on turn one where it looks like she hit a trap door of some kind. Not visible to the naked guy, but I sure it's there. Uh, she's going to be rounding the track, hoping to score some points. And it uh, looks like we actually have a palindrome for a score right now, Rich. 96 to 69. Oh, that we do. I believe oh. that's finishing your drink in uh, playing along at Holmesville. Well, chug, chug, chug as the trickster gets through to pick up a grand slam. We see Bjorn to kill's thumb waggling away out there, indicating that fifth point was picked up. It indicates it so well. Rich. And it uh, looks like we have the bedazzler being shed off the pack from the quad squad. Lady Hoo-Ha gets out on her initial pass. Canada Vinita, however, decides discretion again. The better part of Valor. Two points, two more points for the quad squad. Uh, 103 to 69 for the quad squad here. Got another announcement, Rich. Uh, this one here for Triple M. Uh, 1055 Triple M, the sound of Madison. Which will bring us to an official timeout. Why don't you read a sponsor, Rich? Jeez. Well, what I would like to do is tell you about the three-day WFTDA recognized tournament that the Mad Roland Dolls are going to be hosting here in Madison, Wisconsin at the end of or in the, uh, at the end of May. Cover me in cheese curds and call me Slappy. What's going on, Rich? Well, this invitational called Utter Chaos will take place at the Hartmeyer Ice Arena May 18th through the 20th, and we are proud to announce the following leagues will be participating. We've got the Ann Arbor Derby Dimes, Arch Rival Roller Derby, DuPage Derby Dames, Wisconsin Men's Roller Derby, Mad Roland Dolls, including the Dairyland Dolls, ANB teams, and Team Unicorn, Minnesota Men's Roller Derby, Minnesota Roller Girls, No Coast Derby Girls, Philly Roller Derby, and Team United Roller Derby. For more information and to secure your tickets now, visit madisonrollerderby.org forward slash utter chaos. It's going to be a heck of a thing, Rich. Hope you are having fun. It's going to be an amazing contest. We've got a lot of really great teams coming out here. And, of course, we'll have the opportunity to see the Dairyland Dolls strut their stuff, getting out there. Uh, they just recently came back from Dallas, Texas, competing in the Clover Cup, where both the A and B teams had very good showings. B teams com uh, coming out on top, both of their uh, opponents. And Dairyland Dolls coming over in second overall. But getting back to the action on the track, Mouse out to take lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. She's jamming against Chick Chick Boom for the Bad Squad. Bad Squad again, hemorrhaging blockers. They only have two left on the track, which is, which is an easy number to corral for the Reservoir Dolls blockers. Crocodopolis and Battle, uh, Poison Dart uh, finding themselves, while usually heavy hitting blockers, they rely heavily on their uh, compatriots on the track to help out. And uh, without that, they're uh, a lot easier to manage. A look at the instant replay as Chick Chick Boom tries to put on the brakes but is forced to the outside. Meantime, Mouse gets around Oi, murder face. And just past Poison Dart. Mouse an incredibly nimble, agile jammer and ridiculously fast. Indeed. And out there on the track right now, we have one of her protégés, uh, Nat Splat. Again, one of the very quick and fast jammers. But it looks like it's the Seraphire relying on brute force uh, who makes it out first and is the lead jammer for the quad squad. Seraphire looking to get around and around that track as Nat Splat now with two blockers to beat. That is the Bedazzler and the number seven kill switch. 
Matt Splat now forced to recycle to the back of the pack by the Dazzler while the Seraphire gets around for a grand slam. Five points up for the bad squad. And the jam and the uh, bench is extremely ecstatic. Almost completely losing their minds over this. And I'd be losing my mind over this as well, Rich, because uh, that really just made it look easy right there. Well, and this is such a good place for the quad squad to be in. They've lost all three games that they've played so far this season, coming into this game as the number four seed. And now, really just taking the lead, taking the control of this game away from the number one seed, the Reservoir Dolls. That's got to be a heck of a feather in one's cap, Rich. Uh, all they have to do is hold on to this lead for the next 20 minutes. They seem to be rotating their staff, or the, both, both teams rotating quite well. Yeah, but not a lot of uh, skaters are looking really tired out there. They're really uh, focused on conditioning, and uh, again, they think that they've really focused on their rotations, especially the quad squad and their jammer rotations. Right, and Lady Hoo-Ha here jamming for the Reservoir Dolls with her fast and fierce frenetic jamming style just pushes her way through the pack to take lead jam. As you say, looking not tired at all. Uh, some people make it look easy, Rich. Lady Hoo-Ha is one of them. However, right behind her, well, almost right behind her, is the mystery meet herself, Spam, who doesn't quite make it back up to the pack in time to score points, but uh, definitely enough to pressure uh, Hoo-Ha to call it off before getting the full four, That's instead right. only receiving two. That's right, definitely a good jam for the Reservoir Dolls. We see here Lady Hoo-Ha. She checks back around the outside was forced to the outside by Coila DeVille. I tell you, if no evil thing scares you, she certainly will. It's, uh, you know, it's a special thing to want to make a coat out of uh, puppies, and uh, I think that she really brings that through. Oh, she, she makes a coat out of the puppies of my heart, Zing. Oh, man, it just got at least 10 degrees colder in here, Rich. Up, out there, uh, however, we have Upset, lead jammer for the Bad Squad. She's going to be facing off against, looks like Mouse, for the Reservoir Dolls. Mouse out second, not lead, but point eligible. 53-88 upset, scoring through to the back of the pack. Already passed a couple of blockers, calling it off right before Mouse gets up to the pack and picking up four points. Again, four points here, five points there. It seems to be working out pretty well for the quad squad, but all the Reservoir Dolls need is one really big jam to uh, close this up. Right you are, Zing. We've got the scores up here. Mouse with the lead jamming, uh, or lead point totals for a jammer at 44. Upset over for the quad squad with 27. We're about to get right into this next jam. The Trickster wearing the star for the quad squad in green, going up against Supernova for the Reservoir Dolls in black. A little bit of uh, jammer shenanigans uh, right there. Um, when you have to enter behind the person that knocks you out, it really stinks when that person can uh, just continue to go backwards on the track however far they want. Uh, jammers are not constricted by the boundaries of the engagement zone. Nope. No pack is called. Oh, Supernova almost through, but takes a hit from 120. Poison, Poison Dart. dart. Uh, she will end up getting through to take lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. The and Trickster also through the pack, though, looking to put on the pressure. And indeed, with only two quad squad blockers out there right now, Supernova should have an easy time getting some points at least. She calls it off three points for the Reservoir Dolls. And two for the quad squad, sneaking in there right at the last second. We would like to thank you for watching us here at the Mad Roland Dolls. We will be back in just a moment. Welcome back. You are watching the Mad Roland Dolls semifinals for season 14 here at the Alliant Energy Center Coliseum. I am Rich Mahogany. And I'm Zing Crosby. Right now, we've got a tight battle between the Quad Squad and the Res Dolls. Quad Squad are starting to pull away here, slowly but surely, four points, five points at a time. But uh, the score speaks for itself. Lady, Lady Hoo-Ha Hoo taking lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls, looking to move things in their favor. Quad Squad penalty box filling up. Only two blockers on the track. And, got, and just for a moment, there was but one blocker on the track. So the penalty box is now beginning to empty out. Lady Hoo-Ha through for a four-point scoring pass, is going to call the jam. No points up for the quad squad. Score now, Res Dolls 82, Bad Squad 119, and we have 16 minutes remaining to play. 
And I've got another shout out for you here, Rich. Uh, for the MRD venue, the Mad Roland Dolls are looking for a new home here in Madison and need your help. That's right, you listening at home right now. Every penny helps this fund, uh, helps fund this amazing nonprofit organization of athletes. Something as simple as adding a donation to your next ticket purchase uh, for, say, I don't know, the finals bout, perhaps, or by joining these skaters at the Sky Zone on Wednesday, April 18th at 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. for their fun fundraiser. Uh, visit madisonrollerderby.com or .org slash our dash home for the details. Chris, what's going on out there? Oh, we've got Spam out in front taking lead for the Bad Squad, racing against a mouse for the Reservoir Dolls. The jam will be quickly called. We see two points up for the Reservoir Dolls, three for the Bad Squad. Spam will pick up three points for the Quad Squad. See the alternate for the Bad Squad in there talking to Chaotic Neutral. And it looks like there's a little bit of a... Uh, ref conference happening on the outside as well. Uh, and so that will be an official timeout called for. So that'll give us an opportunity to thank another one of our amazing sponsors here at Mad Roland Dolls, the Vintage Brewing Company. Award-winning beers and great food available at Vintage Brewing Company on Madison's west side and their new location on the beautiful Wisconsin River in downtown Sauk City. Vintage Brewing Company, drinking fresh thinking. And I've got one for Our Lives, Our Lives magazine, serving Madison and Wisconsin's LGBT and XYZ community for 10 years, out six times yearly, and available for free by mail subscription or at the various locations throughout Madison and Milwaukee, online at OurLivesMadison.com. So it looks like the, our officials may be talking a little bit about penalties as they started to get a little out of hand in those last two jams. Taking a look at what the information we have in front of us, we've now got a skier on the Reservoir Dolls side. Lip Smacker has five penalties. Uh, nobody else on the Reservoir Dolls has more than two, though. Uh, taking a look at the quad squad, what do we see there, Zing? Well, it looks like we've got one, two, three, Penalty, uh, three skaters, or two skaters with four penalties and two skaters with three penalties. Nobody else really breaching the, uh, that kind of margins, but uh, worrisome for the quad squad. You definitely want to keep uh, kind of the high impact skaters, which unfortunately be, end up being some of the ones that accrue the most penalties uh, out on the track, making the most impact where they can. However, again, penalties are a bit of the currency of roller derby, and so you're able to spend them and uh, if you go to the box for 30 seconds, but their team doesn't score any points for two minutes. There, there is definitely some give and take when it comes to the penalties. Obviously, it's not good to be, out, to be down a body. It looks like the Reservoir Dolls have added a point to uh, their total from the last jam uh, after a quick ref conference, also known as RefCon 2K18. It looks like they uh, have awarded an additional point to We're Mouse in the previous jam. So an even 3-3 three, three jam that we just saw. We've got Supernova here waiting to jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Actually, like, I love watching her start at the line. She has this little like, 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 like she's a fighter in a fighting game like jam, like jam start. I love it. It speaks to me. She, and, and it clearly speaks to her skills and she is now through taking lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. It's getting up against Spam for the Bad Squad. Looks like Spam might be in the penalty box as the fact that I cannot see her out there right now. Well, she just stood up in the penalty box, meaning she has just under 10 seconds remaining to serve in that penalty. And there she goes. She is back on the track. Penalty box now empty. Five on five on the flat track. Indeed, Supernova getting, uh, I believe, the business being told to her uh, by one of the blockers on the Bad Squad. I believe that is Anita Donut. Uh, putting on the Hertz donut on the opposing jammer. That was a big hit. Took, a, took Nova a moment to get up there, but she is up and good. We always like to say that here, Rich, is that this is all fun and games, but it can get really serious really quickly. Yeah, the big hits are definitely fun, but we also want all of our skaters to be safe because we are all friends and family here. We are. As we said, all of these four home teams, the Quad Squad, Reservoir Dolls, Unholy Rollers, and Vaudeville Vixens all put up skaters to join up in the Dairyland Dolls charter team 
who uh, who recently increased their ranking to to rank 31, if I recall, out of uh, about 330 teams in the WFTDA uh, governing body for women's roller derby. Well, Madison has been here really since the beginning. Um, their founder, uh, Cracker Jack, was part of the original uh, kind of resurfacing of roller derby uh, here in the uh, early 2000s. And because of that, they were part of the founding members of the WFTDA. They're part of the first 20 leagues. Yeah, Something's happening out there on the track, Rich. Lady, Lady Hoo-Ha with some of her trademark acrobatics, doing a few cartwheels around turns three and four. It is a, it is a time-honored tradition uh, to kind of see what you can uh, get out of the officials uh, during these uh, official timeouts. However, they are a, uh, a stone-like group. Team, they, they don't call them Team No Fun for no reason. It's, uh, sometimes they can put the FU back in fun, but most of the time, right out. So we are still getting a few, uh, like making sure all of our T's are dotted, our I's are crossed. God willing. And God willing in the creek, though, Rich. Yeah. Most importantly, making sure that all of our points and penalties are correctly assessed. It always helps when they add up at the end and you don't have to worry about carrying well, three. Darth Chaos taking a shot at Mr. Black and Blue, mascots for the Quad Squad and Reservoir Dolls, respectively. Yeah, we're still getting the gun show out there uh, from the Jam Timer. We will thank another one of our sponsors here at Madison Roller Derby. We would like to thank Yvonne Alyasiri for sponsoring the Mad Roland Dolls. Yvonne is a psychotherapist and clinical social worker, providing mental health and counseling services for individuals, couples, and families in the Dane County area. She specializes in providing gender identity counseling as well as providing sex therapy for individuals and couples and general mental health counseling services for teens and adults. For more information and to schedule for a free phone intake appointment, visit Javon's website at javonaliasiri.com, spelled J-A-V-O-N-A-L-Y-A-S-I-R-I.com, or, or you can visit madrollandolls.com, click about, and then sponsors to find more information. I've got another shout out for Hinkley Productions. Game coverage brought to you by Hinkley Productions. Leading the way in live HD video streaming and professional commercial video production. Supporting the dolls and Derby since 2008. Thanks, Hinkley. We love you. Oh, yes. Handsomely. We've still got the gun show out there. And so, you know what? WRT. Tune in to WRT. 89.9 FM community radio for the for great underground music you know, and talk. Go to wortfm.org to listen to live or on demand. So we see here our jammers ready for the next jam. Lady Hoo Ha and Upset. Both of these jammers skating together on the Dairyland Dolls. Welcome to Wisconsin. And it looks like, again, we've got a breakdown of the points here uh, and from whence they have came. The Quad Squad seems very egalitarian, um, spreading their points around uh, quite a bit. All five of the jammers seem to have fairly comparable points. Meanwhile, on the Reservoir Dolls, Mouse and Lady Hoo-Ha have really been pulling uh, not only their weight, but their entire team's weight. One question for our visiting Derby girl from New Jersey. Where are my tasty cakes? A little bit of the house mic bleeding in here, folks, worrying about some tasty cakes. <laughs> Uh, we definitely encourage you. Uh, you have you have one more opportunity, one more opportunity in 2018 to come and enjoy this thing called Madison Roller Derby here in, <clears throat> here live in Madison. That's right. Our championship match will be taking place April 28th. The bout theme is Space Pants Jam. We will be in the Expo Halls. So. Whoever comes out victorious here, whether it be the Bad Squad or the Reservoir Dolls, will go on to face the Unholy Rollers in the championship in that game. The loser will go on to face the consolation match against the Vaudeville Vixens. Yeah, we gotta end up the season. Everybody needs a place here at the end so that we can start the new one. I'd like to give another shout out. has been expelled for gross misconduct. Oh dear. Uh, well, we have just been informed by an official that Green 906. Oh my. Uh, and so it looks like Anita Donut, aka also known as Super Youper, uh, has been expelled from the game uh, for a gross misconduct. 
We'd like to thank our sponsor. Uh, which is a real shame uh, for the quad squad. Uh, definitely a heavy hitter. Most definitely. So that will be a rough spot for them that will start with electrical disturbance. Number 111 for the bad squad will be starting in the penalty box, serving a penalty for Anita Donut. I, I do not envy the officials in their tasks, um, deciding what has malicious intent and what, do, what doesn't here in the uh, chaos storm that is roller derby is uh, pretty tough. All right, it looks like we've got some information from the referees. Looks like we're getting back to the action zone. Jam timer has his hand up, five seconds, it's called. Here's the whistle. Looks like upset versus Lady Hoo-Ha. Uh, top scorers for their respective teams. Looks like upset is out first. She is your lead jammer. Penalties, penalty calls are just flying in from all over the place. Lady Hoo-Ha has been sent out, cutting penalty, uh, which will leave upset on the track. This is not what rest offense need to see right now, especially when she just sails around the outside like that, Rich. Around the outside, indeed. There's a grand slam up for the quad squad. Reservoir Dolls with three blockers on the track. And the, and the quad squad down to two. Yeah, things definitely starting to get frantic, a little dire here. Less than 13 minutes remain to play. Reservoir Dolls really need to make something happen here to start coming back from the game. But quad squad just starting to edge out their lead inch by inch. Now getting 10 points over the Reservoir Dolls zero in this jam. However, Lady Hoo-Ha coming out of the penalty box like a rocket ship. Makes it through the pack and forces the call off before uh, Dark, excuse me, Dark Horse Upset can make another pass, adding on to her 15-point jam already. Now holding the reservoir, reservoir Dolls down to zero in that jam. They're really starting to break away with this here. Yeah, this is this was this is the time for them to strike. It's almost as if they've lulled everyone into a false sense of security with their three losses this past season. But again, all very close losses, but now they've seemed to really awoken their evil energies as the Trickster takes the star for the quad squad, going up against Mouse for the Reservoir Dolls. Mouse pushes away up front. She is lead jammer for the Reservoir Dolls. And it looks like the Trickster is stuck at the back of the pack. Looks like Matt Splat is really uh, giving her the business. Uh, business, however, is not as good as it was. Uh, Trickster is out, not lead, but ready to score some points. She looks a little bit gassed right now, Rich. Mouse will get out of the pack, calls off the jam, giving everybody a bit of a rest. So they, Res Dolls holding the quad squad scoreless there. Score now, Res Dolls 93, quad squad 137. We have 11 minutes and 25 seconds remaining to play. Looks like we've got a little bit of a replay here, Rich. Going to see a slick whip uh, off of K155 Lip Smacker and around the rest of the quad squad blockers. Supernova with her trademark fighter stance. She will go up the inside lane to find the quad squad blockers. Trying to push her way through. She will get by. Takes lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Sometimes you can ride right up that tape. Uh, and both jammers as families uh, took the same course instruction on that one. And so uh, both are out. Both are eligible for points. But it's Supernova who is in the pack looking to score. Uh, already does off of two blockers, nope, looks like one. Uh, one point for the Reservoir Dolls, zero for the quad squad on this jam. And we're going to take a moment for a commercial break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back to, for the conclusion of the Mad Roland Dolls, quad squad versus Reservoir Dolls. And you are watching the Mad Roland Dolls semifinals of the season 14 here on the internet. Imagine that, Rich. Or they could be on TV. TV? You, you don't know. I don't they know. They could be watching it on, on, on TV. TV. Television. Television. Moving pictures, I, see, I hear. Well, we are going to get into an official timeout here. Hopefully no other expulsion shenanigans here. Taking a look here. We are, we've got uh, nothing, nothing to call home about for the penalties. Still a uh, lip smacker with five on the side of the Reservoir Dolls. No more than two for anybody else. We've got two skaters for the bad squad with four. Ice pick in the bedazzler. Everybody else with three or less. And we are back into the action. We've got Lady Hoo-Ha jamming for the Reservoir Dolls. That is number 31 in black. 
Going up against number 141 for the Bad Squad in green. Spam. Spam is through to take lead jam for the Bad Squad. Lady Hoo-Ha out of the pack, hot on her heels, looking to close that distance. Yeah, it's uh, Lady Hoo-Ha can move, uh, and she can move just as uh, just about as fast as the speed of light. I I can move at the speed of smell, Rich. <laughs> it's you stick with what you're good at. Yep. Uh, two points for the quad squad here. No points for the Reservoir Dolls. Now, my math is a little sketchy, Rich, but that looks like a 45-point lead. I'm going to go ahead and take your word for it, Zing. Um, that's, a, that's a couple of really powerful jams here that the uh, Reservoir Dolls are going to have to uh, order up here real soon. It's definitely not going to be impossible for them. It will be a tough climb. No one better to get it done now than Mouse, number four for the Reservoir Dolls. She is going to be jamming up against Upset for the Bad Squad. Upset out first to take lead jam. However, Mouse taken over out in front. Not your lead jammer, but is the jammer in the lead. Looks like there's some confusion on penalties coming from the outside. Oh well, now the jam. So looking to line up, we've got Supernova for the Reservoir Dolls. We've got questions here. People are looking around, people are suspicious, but Looks jam's like gonna start. Upset jammer for the Bad Squad is going to be starting from the penalty box. Reservoir Dolls also see their pivot, Nat Splat, starting in the box. Supernova up at the front, now two blockers to beat, takes a hit off of Poison Dart. Bad Squad killing just enough time to allow their blockers to take up formation up at the front after recycling Supernova to the back. Nova around the outside. Both of the blockers that block her out go out. She is through. She is not your lead jammer, though, due to a no pass, no penalty. Lead jam is still up for grabs by Dark Horse. I'm sorry, that is upset in her evil name. So she is now back on the track. Penalty box is empty. Supernova looking to pick up as many points as possible before Upset can get lead and call off the jam. It is too late, unfortunately, for Upset, though, as she is sent off on a back-blocking penalty. Uh, she will not have the chance to learn lead, um, having been disqualified or having earned a penalty. But it uh, looks like Supernova is still on the track. She is being recycled to the back by Poison Dart. Uh, makes it past. Only one left to beat. Conan the li Mean Librarian. Excuse me. Uh, can't mount enough of a defense to uh, keep her in the pack. Has to let her go. Very nice job by Nat Splat there, sectioning off Conan the Mean Librarian from being able to get that clean hit off on Supernova. Chick, chick, boom. Uh, recycling. Again, very eco-friendly, these green skaters. Uh, Supernova to the back of the pack. Gets almost out to the front now. Uh, uh, upset back on the track for the quad squad. Supernova does complete another scoring pass. That'll be four points up for the Reservoir Dolls. Upset now through the pack, completing her initial pass. She will now be eligible to score points in the last 10 seconds of this jam. That's a rough two minute jam for both teams right here. Um, even with uh, the Reservoir Dolls having lead jammer on this. Uh, it was a tough slog for Supernova here. Quad Squad did not make it easy. Yeah, even with the, the Bad Squad jammer spending a full minute of this jam in the box, the Quad Squad defense just doing such a good job at preventing the Reservoir Dolls from putting up any additional points. And just on that slow motion replay, a blocked apex jump uh, on upset. I'm seeing a, an official timeout here, Rich. Looks like we've got the gun show out on the jammer line, or on the pivot line, excuse me. Is informed out there, flexing, flexing all night long. Flexing for justice, I believe. <laughs> for great justice. For great justice. So I can math this out a little bit better. Looks like we've got 39 points separating these two teams. And here are the numbers again, folks. Uh, upset, really pulling away for the quad squad, scoring quite, uh, almost twice the amount of points as their next uh, teammate, the Trickster. Over on the Res Dolls, looks like Mouse is, again, the uh, kind of the points boat. Well, we are ready to get into this next jam. Lady Hoo-Ha jamming for the Reservoir Dolls, number 31 in black, going up against the Seraphyr for the Bad Squad. 
your lead jammer, Lady Hoo-Ha, for the Reservoir Dolls. Sarah Fire still stuck in the pack, having a little problem getting uh, knocked around to the outside and back to the inside. Lady Hoo-Ha makes it look easy. Four, uh, five points, excuse me, for the Reservoir Dolls. But the Sarah Fire is also out looking to score points for the Bad Squad. Lady Hoo-Ha gonna dodge around the outside. She does dodge the hit by Quilla DeVille. And she will fall, calling off the jam. Does she get all the points? All four of them, Rich. Yeah, well done there. Nine point jam for the Reservoir Dolls starting to chip away at this Bad Squad lead. But only five minutes remain to close that gap. And a 30 point differential right now. That's uh, two pretty powerful jams. I mean, they've got the time for it for sure, but they're really gonna have to uh, start baking on it. Uh, we'll see what can happen here. We see the Trickster going up to jam for the Bad Squad, going up against Mouse for the Reservoir Dolls. Trickster pushing up, does dance up the inside line, takes lead jam for the Bad Squad. Mouse still stuck at the back of the pack with all four Quad Squad blockers to beat. And, uh, oh, excuse me. Looks like the Trickster was sent to the penalty box. Uh, Looks like lead was retracted and given to Mouse, who I believe is it now in the house. She is indeed in the house, making it out like a bouse, getting five points on that pass. Now coming up for another pass. Will juke to the outside of the bad squad, but is forced to the outside. Recycles back. Reservoir Dolls sectioning out the pivot for the Bad Squad. That is Professor Booty. But the Trickster is out, not lead, but eligible to score points now. And the Reservoir Dolls are doing a very effective job of whittling away that Quad Squad lead. We'll see what Mouse opts to do here. It, she, things are down to the wire when they're in a commanding point. They need to be able to get as many points as they can. Looks like the jam will now be called. Quad Squad getting four, three points, a total of 14 points that jam for the Reservoir Dolls. So that brings our score to Reservoir Dolls 127, Quad Squad 146, as we have an official timeout. Yep, it looks like this one's for track repair, Rich. Uh, they're tearing it up out there so much that the track is beginning to suffer. They are tearing it up, literally. So we are going to get Hot Toddly out there with his trusty band of tape to get this part of the track repaired. So we can take a look at some of our scoring here. Mouse still lead scoring jammer with 65 points over on the side of the bad squad, upset with 46. Things still looking pretty evenly spread for the bad squad. Trickster with 30, Bedazzler with 24, Spam with 23, and Seraphire with 23. Over on the side of the Reservoir Dolls, a little more split up as we had Lady Hoo-Ha with 38. And Supernova with 18, and Miss Mechanics with five, and Nat Splat with one. So we are ready. Track maintenance is complete. We are going to see Nat Splat taking the line for the Reservoir Dolls up against Spam for the Bad Squad. We're only down one blocker, and that's on the Reservoir Dolls side. This is not what they need right now. They need all the help that they can get, trying to make up these last couple of uh, the last uh, 20 points or so here. A spam almost through on the inside, has to uh, get recycled to the back of the pack, uh, where she is, again, being given the business by Slyonide. Silent but deadly. Spam initially absorbing a really nice hit by Slyonide, then right back into the business of things. She will get around. She is through to take lead jam for the Bad Squad. Looks like the Bad Squad are really uh, forming up. They're really having to dig in their heels to uh, provide defense on this jammer right now. Uh, with her helmet cover off, who knows uh, if it's still in her hand or if it's been passed to the pivot yet. Um, Does not look like this, the pivot for the Res Dolls has that. Supernova is still waiting up at the front of the pack. I believe we just saw the handoff there to Supernova. That we did. However, the Bad Squad is well aware of what's going on here. All of their blockers focusing on keeping her back. One bad squad blocker in Oi, Murderface, gonna have to go off to the penalty box. Supernova being recycled to the back of the pack. Still jammer cover in hand. She is the jammer now. And Spam decides to call it off, having scored another five points for the bad squad. And that was a great 
Well, I tell you, Zing, we are getting really down to the wire here. Less than two minutes remain. 127 Res Dolls, 156 Bad Squad. Spam there with a nice juke around Supernova. Just an incredibly nimble jammer, well balanced on her skates. Indeed, and that back and forth can really um, upset blockers targeting and trajectory uh, because you need a you need that moment and. A lot of people take too long and end up telegraphing their blocks, but if you can uh, quickly shift back and forth, uh, it is a great asset to you, just as uh, Lady Hoo Ha did right out there. Lady Hoo Ha through to take lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls, skidding against upset for the Bad Squad. Upset trying to make it by those last bit of Res Dolls blockers, not having any luck yet. Of course, as I say that, she is through on her initial pass. But Lady Hoo Ha is hot on her heels, already having made it back to the pack and has but two green blockers to beat. Muscles through, four more points for the Reservoir Dolls. Less than a minute to go. Uh, this is the moment where you start looking for the bench to, uh, for a timeout here, Rich. Yes, indeed, Z. We've, and both teams have a quite the complement of clock stoppages. We will see the timeout being called for by the Reservoir Dolls. That'll freeze the clock at 47 seconds. Reservoir Dolls at 131. Quad squad 156. 25 points separate these two teams. It is definitely not insurmountable. We have seen plenty of 25 point jams in the last jam to make a comeback. It is not outside of the Res Dolls reach, but it is going to be hard. It is, and especially with the defense that the quad squad's been putting up. Again, they were able to kind of claw out this lead for themselves by just focusing on a, defense, but B, not worrying about those big games. They're worrying about getting those four and five points. They add up after time. Uh, they do, so we'll see here. We see the trickster on the track for the bad squad. I believe I saw, oh, no, they are, they are actually going to be sending out upset. Trickster not happy about that call, but understands it for the greater good of the team. She looked like somebody had uh, absolutely flattened her puppy right yeah. there. So we'll see Mouse wearing the star for the Reservoir Dolls. Taking a look over at the penalty box, I believe there are some folks in there. Two for the Reservoir Dolls. That puts two blockers out on the track. Uh, not what you want to see, and that certainly isn't what you want to see if you're a member of the Reservoir Dolls. That's right, Mouse, or er, Alpset's gonna get through to take lead jam for the Bad Squad. Mouse forced to the outside, not yet free of the pack, will now get through completing her initial pass. 25 seconds remain on the clock. And right now, if you're the quad squad, you just need to burn time. Exactly. Uh, if they burn this next 17 seconds and then call the jam, the game is theirs. As long as Upset doesn't get a penalty and go to the box. Yep, which is always a problem here. Mouse is through, picks up three points. Upset waiting on that clock, watching. Is now getting the sign from the bench to go, but now says, no, no, never mind, don't go, call it. So that looks like it will bring us to our final score. Not quite official, uh, but there would need to be some pretty major score changes to change the result of this match. Reservoir Dolls fall to the quad squad. Quad squad's gonna go on to the championships in April 28th to face off against the Unholy Rollers for a chance to defend their title and Leggy, the leg of champions. Well, it's a heck of an upset here, Rich, uh, especially looking at uh, earlier in the season. And so I'd say that the quad squad, again, has accrued more penalties, but uh, they just brought a little bit more heart. They brought a little bit more stamina to the uh, playing field this time. And uh, I don't know what happened in the locker rooms in between the season and uh, finals and semifinals here, but whatever happened, it worked. It, it worked out wonderfully for the bad squad. We now have our official final score, Reservoir Dolls 134 to the bad squads 163. They take the victory. What a rough loss for the Reservoir Dolls. They have played an amazing season, will continue to play an amazing season in the consolation match against the Vaudeville Vixens on April 28th. However, Leggy will be out of their reach for the season 14. It happens, Rich. And again, as, uh, as numerous skaters have always said, there's always next season. True that. 
Well, that will just about do it for us here. Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you have enjoyed this game at least as much as we have. For the Mad Rollin' Dolls, I'm Rich Mahogany. And I'm Zane Crosby. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Stay safe.